is brought to you by APQS, handcrafted quilting machines. Arafil, Arafil Italian thread, perfectly suited for all your quilting projects. Baby Lock, for the love of sewing. Havel Sewing, when you need to cut it close, choose Havels. Moda, make something quilty with Moda fabrics. Hey everybody, thanks for watching Quilty. I'm Mary Fonz, I'm your host, and today on the show we have a Quilty Fantastic episode. We call them Fantastic Episodes because our fans are so great at suggesting shows that they want to see. So Sarah Jane, this one's for you. Do you use steam in your iron? It's like the question. It's one of the many questions that beginner quilters have. Like, do you use steam? You use steam when you press clothes. You often use moisture of some kind when you're pressing yardage, like you get it back from the quilt shop and you need to, you know, you need to iron it out and make it flat before you cut it. But after you cut your pieces and you're putting together your patchwork and your blocks, do you use steam? We're going to answer that question today. All right. So here is a piece of fabric. It is a square. I have cut it from a lovely houndstooth uh, moda print that is just all the rage. And um, I want to tell you what warp and weft is. We've talked about it before, but I'm going to give you a really easy way to understand and remember what warp and weft is, because that is part of the answer to the question about steam. Okay, when you have a piece of fabric like this that you're using in quilting, it's cotton broadcloth. And cotton broadcloth is woven fabric, okay? So on the big fabric making machines in the big, you know, fabric manufacturers in the sky or whatever, when they are making fabric, they have warp threads on the big, big, big looms, and they have weft threads on the big, big, big looms. And the way you can remember it, I thought of this myself, warp is up and down, okay? I can't remember that. But weft is like east and left, east and weft. East and weft. So, right? You can remember it now. East and weft. So that's how you know, like warp and weft is up, or warp is up and down, weft is uh, right and left. So it's woven and it's really tight. I mean, cotton fabric is woven and it's really pretty strong, but it's not indestructible. And if you pull it and if you stretch it and if you get it really wet and then you pull it and stretch it, it is not going to keep its shape. I talked to my mom, Marianne Fons, very good quilter about this. She had a great analogy. She's like, you know, if you ever use hair curlers and you, you like use steam curlers in your hair, ladies, ladies, uh, you have like their hot rollers and you wrap your hair around them and then your hair dries around those curlers and then it sets, right? It sets and it like dries and it sets. So when you take the curler out, it's, it's in a different shape. Totally the same with fabric. So if I am using a lot of steam, and I'm pressing and getting this piece of fabric wet, the warp and the weft start doing crazy things like this. Dun, 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 dun. Yikes, look at this. Seriously, what happened to this? Well, steam happened to this. This is the same uh, piece of fabric. It's the same dimensions. I cut the same square out of the same fabric and then I really manhandled it with a lot of steam in my iron. I took it to the pressing service, steam, 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 steamed it up and really smooshed it back and forth with that steam. The fabric got wet, then it got hot, and then it dried and it dried really stretchy. And I'll point out too, I don't know if you can see it, our cameras are pretty good, but I also got some discoloration because the water was on the iron and the iron's not like squeaky, squeaky clean. It's got res residue from, I don't know, whatever, just like the air. And so it got on my fabric. So it kind of like mucked up my fabric in that way too. So think about what would happen. So many of us cut strips for our patchwork. That's one of the first things we do. And think how bad this could get. I mean, this is a long skinny piece. If you really start manhandling this and getting it wet with all that steam, it's not good. But something that you have to understand is that steam is not always like wrong. It's not always the worst thing ever. Like my mom says, Steam is actually kind of a frenemy because it's an, en it's an enemy when you're doing something like this and you're, you're using it, uh, uh, you're abusing it. But once you have a block finished, you know, you have your quilt block or you have a, you know, a unit of some kind, a little bit of steam or even more specifically, a little bit of moisture can help set that block because you do want to set certain things. Once your block is finished or once your quilt up is finished and you're really pressing it to get it nice for machine quilting, setting it can be okay. But this is where our sort of last tip comes in, Sarah Rice and all the rest of you who wonder these things. Um, there is kind of a difference between 
using the steam and the water from your iron and choosing to use water from a different source. Okay, this is a spray bottle. I've had this spray bottle a long time. I keep just reusing it because it's a great size. When you have water from your iron, that water is coming through your iron. You, you fill up your iron and you're using the steam or you're spraying it. The water has to travel through this machine, right? It, I don't know if it's a metal reservoir or a plastic reservoir or whatever, but the water that comes through your iron is being heated, it's, being, it's evaporating, you know, funky stuff is happening in there. It's cooking in there, I guess you could say. When you use a spray bottle, when you use some other form of, you know, vessel for your water, and tap water is fine. Some quilters actually say never use distilled water. I don't actually know why they say that. I don't know everything, what can I say? But some quilters are like, oh no, no distilled water, tap water only, okay. But when you use a spray bottle, you don't deal with any of that iron goo or heat stuff happening. It's just a little spritz on your pressing surface and the cardinal rule of pressing up and down. You're using it like a like a blacksmith's iron. You're you know searing your patchwork, but you're not smushing and you're not pressing and you're not manhandling that fabric, especially if it's got any moisture on it at all, wherever that moisture comes from. Okay, so rules of thumb. Don't use too much steam. Warp and weft right? Warp and weft. And if you do use a little water, use it judiciously and maybe a spray bottle is better. A little bit of starch is okay too, but we'll talk about that on another show. So send us your emails. Tell us what you like about Quilty and what you want to see more of. We really love getting those emails. Sometimes we're slow at responding to them because we, we're getting a lot of them, which is great. So we appreciate your support. So, um, and check out the Facebook page because it's pretty fun. We have a good time. Thanks. Quilty is brought to you by APQS, handcrafted quilting machines. Aurifil. Aurifil Italian thread, perfectly suited for all your quilting projects. Baby Lock, for the love of sewing. Havel Sewing, when you need to cut it close, choose Havels. Moda, make something quilty with Moda fabrics.